Good afternoon, everybody. Let's read some poems. All right, so hope everyone's doing well. School's going well. You've settled into this routine. We only got a few weeks left. I emailed and sent a video out with the final assignment. Uh, this will be our final poetry forum. So let's look at this. And this is from the second packet, which deals predominantly with African American poetry. Uh, the forum questions this week, you can pull them up. Number one, close read Langston Hughes' song for a dark girl. What is one line that jumps out of you? What is one line you find confusing that old song and dance? Uh, we'll talk about this poem. We'll look in close read Robert Hayden's Those Winter Sundays, one of the most famous poems of the 20th century. And then we'll close read a contemporary poet, Major Jackson, Mighty Ponds. So I, I have a couple audio video clips with these. Uh, let's jump right in and look at Song for a Dark Girl. A length, I don't know, I, if we were in class, we would be writing and talking about this stuff. Langston Hughes is usually a poet that people who really don't know poetry know Langston Hughes. Very famous uh, black poet, Harlem Renaissance, if you've covered the Harlem Renaissance, 20s in Harlem, wrote a lot of poems with jazz infused lyrics, blues infused lyrics. For a long time, he, you know, he's very famous, probably one of the most famous 20th century poets, but sometimes he's dismissed as, as seemingly simple, as without much depth. And I argue completely against that. And I'm going to illustrate how Song for a Dark Girl frustrates those notions. On the surface, it's a seemingly, seemingly simple poem, but there's so much going on, so much below the surface. Song for a Dark Girl. Way down south in Dixie, break the heart of me. They hung my black young lover to a crossroads tree. Way down south in Dixie, bruised body high in the air. I asked the white Lord Jesus, what was the use of prayer? Way down south in Dixie, break the heart of me. Love is a naked shadow on a gnarled and naked tree. We'd read this poem two or three times and look at it. Blues, right? If you're a blues fan, the repetition, 12 bar blues, the cadences, the repetition of lines. We have way down south in Dixie is the first line of each stanza. So the repetition of that, break the heart of me, the repetition of that. Uh, what is a song? And this is one of the questions as well, right? What is a song? What's a song do? What's a song supposed to do when we listen to a song? So it's song for a dark girl. And who's the dark girl? Who's speaking this poem? Again, we don't have a gender. Hughes is known throughout his poem as to really play with gender quite a bit. Sometimes he takes male voice personas, sometimes female voice personas. Song for a dark girl. It could be one way to read this poem. Song for a dark girl, the dark girl, African-American girl, woman, whose male lover is hanged, right? Racism right there, lynching. We have that from the flowers as well. But it could be any person because women were, were lynched as well, right? What Back to a song. What's a song supposed to do? makes us feel something, makes us feel an emotion, conveys an emotion. This song does that. What else is a song supposed to do? Think of all the functions of songs. Think of a protest song. What's a protest song supposed to do? A protest song calls attention to injustices. That's what this song is doing. It's also, this song also informs. It informs people, it teaches people. It's a lament, it soothes people. You know, when we're sad, we like sad songs, right? What else does it do? It, it kind of puts forth all these emotions. It does all these things. It's ang it can be angry too, right? This is what they do down south in Dixie. Think of the, tr I had the clip of, the, of Dixie. 
the the traditional song Dixie meant to play as a lament for the South, right? Listen to that song. This is like Langston Hughes writing a new Dixie. And angry, it, it, it's angry, it's sad, it's upset, it's lamenting, it's emotional, it's pissed off, it's asking why. Here's what really happens in Dixie. They lynch people. Here's what goes on in your Dixie, right? Look at the second stanza. Bruised body high in the air. I asked the white Lord Jesus what was the use of prayer. Why is it white Lord Jesus? I asked the white Lord Jesus. Why isn't it just I asked Lord Jesus what was the use of prayer? Um, Mark's famous quote is religion is the opiate of the masses. And Marx isn't necessarily bad mouthing religion. What he was saying is that a lot of times people in power use religion to keep the people without power in their place. In that, that you know, your life is miserable, you're gonna suffer, you're gonna work, you're gonna be treated, you're gonna be a slave. But in the sweet by and by, when you're in heaven, everything will be better. So don't question why things are why, you know, or Jesus is there for the white people, right? But then why are the African-American people suffering and doing all this? What was the use of prayer? If I pray, I pray, I pray, and this is still what happens. Is this song a, a different type of prayer? Is this inverting the notion of prayer? Bruised body high in the air. The lynched individuals bruised bodies high in the air. Who else's body is high in the air? Jesus, right? So there's the comparison of the lynched African-American to a Jesus-type figure, a holy figure, right? So we have that. Way down south in Dixie, break the heart of me. Love is a naked shadow on a gnarled naked tree. And you see on the sheet, that's, that's the line that confuses me. What the hell's a naked shadow? How can a shadow be naked? Most oftentimes people were lynched and they were clothes were stripped and they were hung naked. You know, when, when a person is stripped beyond being stripped, laid bare, mutilated, brutally beaten, the naked shadow on a gnarled and naked tree, the tree is naked too, the tree is dead. Nothing's growing on the tree. This person is hanging from a dead tree. Crossroads. They, hand, they show the people at the crossroads because this is where all the traffic is. They want everyone to see. Uh, you know, I asked the white Lord Jesus. Jesus, well, it's an accusation, a placation. Uh, the repetition of the blues, it calls attention to it, it draws attention to it. But you can also look at the repetition as a type of solve, as a type of comforting thing. So we have a, both an angry protest song, a memory, an elegy, elegy for a dead person, an elegy, uh, it's a lament. It all also can soothe the speaker, repetition. Uh, so is the shadow already a ghost? Yeah. Simple language with many addresses. Who's this song for? For a dark girl. It's also a warning, an education. It's all these things. It's a, it's a protest. So, yeah, Song for a Dark Girl. <clears throat> Powerful poem, short poem, seemingly simple surface, very, very complicated. Let's look at Robert Hayden. Jericho Brown's a young man's really good too. It's a sonnet. That's a sonnet. Robert Hayden's Those Winter Sundays is a sonnet. We're only going to look at Those Winter Sundays and Major Jackson. Robert Hayden, amazing, really famous 20th century poet, uh, was kind of attacked, African American black poet, was attacked a little bit by a group called BAM, the Black Arts Movement, because they argued that he didn't write black enough. Right, like you would never really even know this poem was about African American life unless you knew the poet. He he a lot of times didn't make overt references and he was attacked, but he's a master poet. 
Let's look at those winter Sundays, a sonnet, famous sonnet. Sundays too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue black cold. Then with cracked hands that ached from labor in the weekday weather, made banked fires blaze. No one ever thanked him. I'd wake and hear the cold splintering, breaking. When the rooms were warm, he'd call, and slowly I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic angers of that house. Speaking indifferently to him, who had driven out the cold and polished my good shoes as well. What did I know? What did I know of love's austere and lonely offices? Those winter Sundays. Describe winter Sundays. What's a winter Sunday like for you? Is a winter Sunday a lazy day? Are you working? The father at work here, the father here, we know he's a hard worker, right? The father's a hard worker. Sundays too. So not only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sundays too, my father got up early. Father never slept in. He gets up, he's the first one up and put his clothes on in the blue black cold. What the hell's blue black cold? Colder than a motherfucker, right? Blue black cold's cold. Then with cracked hands that ached from labor, that tells us the father is a working man. With cracked hands that ached from labor, in the weekday weather made banked fires blaze. This man got up and made the fire. No one ever thanked him, right? Think of the things, you know, and we know this poem is written later, years later. Is this a thank you? Is this a thank you? Well, we'll think of kids, right? We always take all that shit for granted. We, a lot of times we take for granted there's gonna be food in the fridge, heat's gonna be paid, there's gonna be water, there's gonna be utilities. We just don't even think about those. And shit, when you get older, you're like, damn, I gotta pay for all this shit, right? Someone always took care of me. You know, there was always food, there was always heat, there was always a blanket, there was always clothes. No one ever thanked him. I'd wake and hear the cold splintering breaking. Damn, you know it's cold. When the rooms were warm, he'd call. And slowly I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic angers of that house. Describe the mood of the house. How does the son look back at his father? And I would, I'm gonna argue this is the son because of the shoes. The chronic angers of that house. This is one of those things, right? I don't think it was a horrible house. It wasn't, it help, this could be Romero. This might be a good poem to talk about with Romero shirt. The father in here reminds me of Romero. Chronic angers of the house. American dream, you bust your ass every day and still it's just not enough, right? It's not enough. And, and all of these things, they kind of break a person after a while, right? The chronic angers of that house, just all the world that of any, we don't have an over or explicit hint at race, but we may have, get, may have gotten there. Some of the shit the father probably put up with due to race, work, et cetera. Speaking indifferently to him, don't our, you know, when we're kids, just like, yeah, indifferently like they're not even there we treat our parents like they're not even there that's good though right not good obviously but as a parent don't you want your kid you know they won't you know but later they realize all these things they've done speaking indifferently to him who had driven out the cold and polished my good shoes as well not only did the father put the fire he took his shoe, his son's shoes, probably for church, right? His church shoes, polished his shoes. While the son, while the child was sleeping, the father got up, not only got the fire to give him polished his shoes. Damn, now that's, you could tell they're close, right? You could tell they're close there, polished his shoes. And then we get kind of the moment where it, it reaches out toward the, present which is years after this what did i know what did i know of love's austere and lonely offices what the hell does that mean <clears throat> look up austere austere is anything without ornamentation something stripped bare the bare minimum the bare essentials 
love's austere and lonely offices. You know, a lot of times love is, love isn't really saying things, it's doing things, right? A lot of times you might have a mom or dad who they don't say they love you, but if they do shit for you, you know. It's not the dad who, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'll pick you up for the game on Saturday. You know, they they blow you off. They're not there. They just kind of, they tell you one thing and do another, right? It's the actions. It's the actions that matter. And if it's just actions, you know, it's getting the house warm and polishing the shoes, simple things that add up over a long time. Love's austere and lonely offices. What did I know? What did I know? of love's austere and lonely offices. And the speaker knows now, the son knows now, and this sonnet is for the father, right? Those winter Sundays. Let's look quickly at Major Jackson's Mighty Ponds, a favorite, favorite, favorite poem of mine. And the audio is on there with Jackson reading it. Uh, I mentioned here, this is a mono stick where the poem is just one line. It's one sentence that doesn't stop. I love this poem because we got this. Well, let's read it and then talk about it. Mighty Ponds. If I told you, Earl, the toughest kid on my block in North Philadelphia, bow-legged and ominous, could beat any man or woman in ten moves playing white, or that he traveled to Yugoslavia to frustrate the bearded masters at the Belgrade Chess Association, you'd think I was given a hyperbole. And if, at dinner time, I took you into the faint light of his Section 8 home reeking of onions, liver, and gravy, his six little brothers fighting on a broken love seat for room in front of a cracked flat screen, one whose diaper sags, it's a wonder it hasn't fallen to his ankles, the walls behind doors exposing the sheetrock, the perfect O of a handle, and the slats of stairs missing where baby boy gets stuck trying to ascend to a dominion foreign to you and me with its loud timbales and drums blasting down from the closed room of his cousin, whose mother stands on a corner on the other side of town, all times of day and night, except when her relief check arrives at the beginning of the month. You'd get a better picture of Earl's ferocity after school on the board in Mr. Sherman's class but not necessarily when he stands near you at a downtown bus stop in a jacket a size too small, hunching his shoulders around his ears as you imagine the checkered squares of his poverty and anger, and pray he does not turn his precise gaze too long in your direction for fear he blames you and proceeds to take your queen. Wow. The speaker, I don't, I don't know if he, he knows Earl, He's been, he knows what Earl's place is like, and he's probably friends with Earl. Earl's a tough son of a bitch, right? I love Earl. Uh, who is Earl? Chess, a young chess master. How old's Earl? We don't know. High school, maybe? 15? Chess master. Poor black kid, too. Growing up rough. What a, what a, what a paradox there, right? Mighty Pawns is the black kid a pawn. Think of his mastering chess, mighty pawns. Think of the way you use your pawns. You play chess. Like, you know, think of the chess matches. Uh, the, you know, this is Poetry Writing 101 for oh, senses, sound, taking us to a place. It, I took you into the faint light of a Section 8 home. Section 8 home, we know where he lives. Reeking of onions, liver, and gravy. We get the smells, we get the noises, his six little brothers, and we can imagine Earl practicing chess amidst all this chaos, right? Earl is like, he's ready to explode, and he's been to Yugoslavia. So we get this kind of contradiction, right? Earl, this tough black kid who's a chess master, and we know in many ways Earl reminds me of a... Uh, Nia, Earl's gonna make it, right? He's gonna make it with this chest, and he's a bad motherfucker too. You know, if I told you, you know, if I told you, you'd get a better picture of Earl's ferocity. He's fierce, ferocity after school. 
he's just locked in, right? The jacket too small. They can't afford new clothes. Everything's handy now. We get the cousin's mother who's on the corner. We know doing what, right? Standing on the corner. Just kind of chaos of the house. Earl's ferocious concentration on the task at hand. Being a ch It's going to be his way out. You know? Don't fuck with Earl. And pray he does not turn his precise gaze. Earl has a precise gaze. Too long in your direction for fear he blames you and proceeds to take your queen. He'll beat your ass if you mess with him. Right? I love this poem. Earl's a superstar. Uh, and you can kind of, it's mono stick, the kind of, the, it's one sentence down throughout and you get, it's a journey, right? And it doesn't, the, 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 the form of the poem adds to the poem, what it does, who Earl is, the sounds, smells, experience, Earl's ferociousness. He's coiled, you know, he's ready to strike. He, he's like, he's angry, but he's focusing that anger. You know, think of this, think of the, you know, he's focusing the anger into the chess. And that chess is going to get him somewhere else, somewhere better. I think Earl is a superstar. I think Earl has amazing things in his future.